So good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining me. Um, today we're going to be looking at how to approach a performance issue with an employee. Um, my name is Leanne Porter and I am a HR business partner for Clover HR. Um, so this is the Clover HR team. Um, we are your trusted people advisors, uh, but also much more as we do have specialists within our team in recruitment, learning and development, coaching, health and safety, and also CV writing. And this is just um, our latest team photo. Hopefully I have muted all microphones and do ask that you keep your microphones muted uh, throughout today's session just to help keep background noise to a minimum and also for our recording. Um, at the end of today's webinar, I will provide you with my contact details. Um, so if you do have any questions or queries, if you could just hold on to these until the end, um, that would be great. Um, so let's just look at what we will be covering today. So firstly, we'll look at what we mean by performance management. Then we'll look into some reasons as to why employees underperform. Um, we'll also look at how you can improve an employee's performance. We'll then look um, at conducting performance reviews. We'll also be looking at setting performance standard, standards and objectives. And finally, we'll look at performance related pay and when you might use it. Um, so performance management, um, a big challenge I find um, with many of the clients I work with and also businesses I've worked with um, over the years is the employer's ability to harness the relationship between um, employees and the value they deliver. Employee performance uh, can refer to the effectiveness, quality and efficiency of their output, um, but, for, oh, but performance also contributes to our assessment of how valuable an employee is to the business. So performance management can be described by activities that establish objectives, objectives through which an individual and teams can see their part in the organisation's mission and strategy improve performance amongst employees, teams, and ultimately the business, and also link performance management to reward, career progression, and where applicable, um, termination of contracts. And today uh, we'll have a little look at all three areas. So before we can look at improving an employee's performance, um, we need to make sure we understand the reasons why the employee is underperforming first. This information can be invaluable to ensuring the solution um, that you choose really does solve the problem. So the best way to do this is to gain an understanding as to the reason why employees are not performing at their optimal level. Um, some of the reasons are, will be valid and will hold clues for how um, to solve the issue. So say for example, an employee might be struggling with something outside the workplace or they might have a learning difficulty which you weren't previously aware of. So an example might be you notice that an employee has been repeatedly, repeatedly late in recent weeks. Um, I would suggest that your first point of call should be to talk to the employee about why they have been um, continually arriving at work so late. Um, it might be a case that they take public transport um, which has been unreliable, or they might have a personal issue which they're trying to overcome. The objective um, should always be to find a solution that works for you both in the first instance. So in the example I was just talking about, it might be that you're able to adjust the employee's standard hours just while the employee works through um, the issue. Another reason might be that the employees don't understand what's expected of them. Often there can be a disconnect between um, a manager's expectations and the employee's understanding of their role. Um, in fact, research from um, Gallup suggested that only about half of employees strongly agree that they know what is expected of them at work. Employees do need very clear direction about their responsibilities, along with um, the expectations for um, achievement. So this should be looking at things like job descriptions, appraisals and regular catch ups um, with the employees to help them align um, what their responsibilities and accountabilities are. 
if you are worried employees don't understand uh, the expectations and goals um, which you set out for them, then I would suggest you ask them to do a self-assessment. So have them write down um, how to assess their performance and say what they believe are the three most important goals for their role. And it will just help you start, start a discussion um, to get into the detail. Um, employees um, might not know that they're meeting expectations. So um, line managers um, need to really know what employees are working on and be able to hold them accountable for meeting their expectations um, and should be providing regular feedback on performance and it should be both positive um, and constructive. If you think that an employee doesn't know uh, that they're not meeting performance standards, again, you can get them to assess their own performance and ask them how, they're think how they think they're performing and any evidence they've got to support it. Um, it might be that employees don't know how to perform perform as expected. So sometimes it will be a case that employees don't have the skills or knowledge you expect them to have or come into the role with. Um, whether they are lacking technical skills to do the job or the soft, soft skills uh, required to be successful in In the workplace. Remember a gap in some has an employee been recently promoted and what training um, has been provided. It might be employees are unable to meet expectations. So say you're at a point where you've set clear goals and expectations, you have been providing regular feedback, um, yet you've still seen no improvement um, in the employee's performance. At this point, um, you do need to make it clear that change is required, but equally let them know that your goal is to help them reach their full potential and capacity. And the purpose of the process is to help them get there. And also in some cases, it just might be that the employees are choosing not to meet expectations. So this is about a won't do attitude over a can't do. So looking at capability over conduct, and despite providing the employee with everything they need to be successful in their role, so looking at resources, equipment, training, feedback, and making them aware that they need to improve, things just um, aren't getting any better, then this usually is a result of disengagement, disconnection, or resentment. I think whatever the reason for underperformance, the best way to handle a performance issue is to be proactive. So once you've got a handle on what is causing the employee to underperform, you can target solutions to address the issues. Um, and here I've just outlined some techniques um, to help you manage and improve um, employees' performance. So com com uh, communicate clear expectations. So this is about making sure the employee is clear about um, their work and ensuring expectations are well communicated. Um, so for an example, is there a deadline the employee needs to meet? Should it be done in a certain format? Uh, what needs to be included as a minimum? I generally find that if um, an employee can explain the objectives in their own words, um, then there is a good chance that they do know what they're doing and know how to get it done. Uh, make sure performance appraisals are consistent. Um, having regular and timely appraisals ensure that employees know where they stand at all times and this may be every month, every six months, annually or really just whatever works for your business. If you are conducting performance appraisals regularly this can also keep goals in the forefront um, of employees daily tasks. Make employee development a priority so working with employees to close any skill gaps will not only help them to achieve long-term goals, but will also benefit the business, particularly if their skills help to fulfill the objectives, business objectives. Um, training and development will also ensure the employees supported to conduct um, their role to their full potential. And essentially ongoing training allows employees to continue to develop their skills and improve their performance. So take steps towards improving morale. Um, there's no surprise that employees perform better when they are satisfied with their job. Um, employees can review things such as the work environment, employee benefits, uh, salary levels, 
um, and even the employee's understanding of the company's mission and vision. Employees who understand how their role helps the company succeed are often more willing to do um, their very best. So you can empower employees to do their job well. So empowering employees can take on many forms as they gain the authority to make decisions um, that can have a huge impact on their success. Um, so an example might be giving them input on goals and objectives and implement the right technologies. Um, so workforces are often now decentralized and um, home working has only increased and looking to continue with the current coronavirus pandemic. Um, creating powerful communication channels with collaborative platforms um, such as Microsoft Teams allows managers to communicate with their teams um, to drive engagement and performance. Um, so looking at how you can conduct an effective employee performance review. Um, so now, although the specifics may vary depending on um, different companies and workforce makeups, um, there are some great initiatives that businesses can use when creating or reviewing their performance review process. Um, remember, a performance review is about assessing the employee against relevant criteria and providing um, them with information um, that will be most effective for improving their performance. So just some tips to remember, um, schedule one-to-one -one meetings between the employee and their supervisor or line manager. Um, so this is a great tactic for employees that are engaging, like direct feedback, and feel comfortable voicing their own experiences and opinions. It's also an opportunity um, to communicate and make sure there is transparency between the employee and the leadership team. You can use a number scale rating. So this is a common one I've seen in many businesses I have both worked in and currently support. So using a rating scale provides tangible metrics against the employee's performance and can be filled out quite quickly and easily. Uh, most number scale ratings I've used in the past um, scale between one to five, with one being the lowest level of performance and five being the highest. Um, but it's always good practice to list out what you're looking for at each of the levels. Um, so both the line manager and employee know what is required to meet each of the levels and hopefully um, will be aligned. Um, have the team fill out anonymous peer reviews on one another. So this is looking at more like 360 feedback by where um, a line manager seeks feedback from a number of peers across the business. So they can get an understanding of different perspectives on how the employee works and interacts with the team, which can then um, be used for development opportunities. Um, I would uh, recommend where possible that peer reviews are anonymous um, just so that employees feel safe um, to give honest feedback. Ensure that performance reviews are regular and consistent across the business. So how often you can conduct performance reviews will depend on your business. Um, I've worked with some companies who conduct smallly monthly, monthly reviews and others which tend to be more common are conducted annually. Uh, there is no right or wrong, it's just about what is the best fit for your business and employees. Um, but whatever you do, um, agree, make sure the line managers or those who are conducting the performance reviews set time aside and stick to it. Um, from an employee's perspective, the worst thing is when performance reviews are scheduled and then keep getting moved back, changed or pushed back. Employees really value these meetings and they can quickly become disengaged when it appears their line manager or supervisor is not prioritising or taking their performance and development seriously. And then finally, um, remember to take action from anything that is agreed as part of the meeting. Um, it is good practice to end the meeting or follow up on the actions and who is responsible for getting them completed. Um, employees can and do quickly become dis, um, do disregard performance reviews and just see them as a bit of a tick box exercise um, if they can't see any value in the exercise or that the business is taking their feedback on board. Um, 
Right, so moving on to setting performance standards and objectives. So objectives, um, which can also be referred to as targets or goals, um, are definable achievements that your employees are expected to accomplish. Objectives should be fair, accurate and reflect the tasks employees actually carry out. And they should also focus on areas where the employee has control um, over the outcome. Um, so the SMART objective framework can provide a useful way to set clear performance measurements and I'm sure it's one some of you are familiar with um, but just to recap SMART objectives are specific um, so this looks at what exactly does the employee need to do. Here you might want to use the employee's job description um, to assign measurable standards for each task listed under the job description and it's just generally a good starting point um, for you. Measurable, so how will the manager and the employee know that it has been achieved? Objectives should be measurable in a way that is tangible evidence um, can be presented along the way. Achievable, um, so while it should be challenging, it should be something that the employee is capable of doing. Relevant, does it relate to the needs of the team, department or business and time bound? So when does it need to be achieved by? Um, remember when setting performance measurements, you must ensure um, you do not discriminate against employees because of a protective characteristic. So for an example, an employee's age, race or disability. Um, a common issue with performance measures is where an employee with a disability could be disadvantaged. Um, so just as, as an example, um, a call centre might partly measure staff performance on how compliant they are to the work schedule for being on the phone. Um, so an employee who has a disability that means they have to take frequent toilet breaks could be unfairly disadvantaged by this unless reasonable adjustments are considered. Um, so performance related pay is another type of performance management by where progression and pay is linked to the employee's individual performance and usually measured um, against a set of um, pre-agreed objectives. Often we see performance related pay linked to revenue, revenue targets often set in sales based environments um, usually to earn commission. So for, for example, Someone working in a shoe shop might earn, say, 1% commission on every pair of shoes um, they sell, which will then, of course, incentivize them to sell more shoes. Um, but they are still paid um, an hourly rate, even if they don't sell any shoes. So for performance related pay to be effective, employees need to see a clear and prompt link between the effort required and the reward that will be obtained and to feel that the level of reward on offer is also worth the effort. There are a number of advantages to using performance related pay, uh, which include setting a framework of goal setting that improves individual performance, which in turn will improve the employee's focus. It rewards the best workers and highlights poor performance effectively and can create a healthy performance based culture within an organisation. However, you do need to exercise caution when implementing performance related pay system, as it's easy for some of the advantages to become disadvantages under certain circumstances. So for example, um, setting goals too high can demotivate your employees and you can destroy a team's atmosphere by pushing competition too aggressively. In addition, performance related pay, when not managed correctly, can encourage unhealthy competitiveness, which can then often lead to burnouts um, as employees feel pressured to keep working harder and faster. So it's important for performance related pay to be executed in the right environment and with the right support in place. Um, so for me to summarise uh, today's session, the essence of some of the key messages around performance management, um, which hopefully we've covered off, are ensuring, ensuring performance management is a constant cycle. Try to keep it simple. Try to plan, monitor, review. Uh, remember to keep paperwork. Um, 
and to, to record employees' performance and link it with uh, company goals. Try to put time investment in up front and through the cycle, which will then save you time later down the line. If and when um, it doesn't work, then is it a question of the employee uh, not being able to or just simply not wanting to? So just looking at conduct over capability. And where possible, try to use further HR processes within your company to manage performance. Um, so looking at things like building a culture that encompass, encompasses continual development, developing company values and the employer brand, which can then define behaviours and also drive recruitment, which can then all be linked back to performance. Um, and that's it for today's session. Um, thank you for attending today's webinar and your attention. I do hope that you have found it useful. If you do have any comments or feedback, um, or if there's anything you'd like to see in any of our future webinars, um, let me know and we will try to accommodate this where we can. Um, we will be posting this webinar on our website and YouTube channel. So feel free to share with others that you think might benefit or watch again. Um, and as I said at the beginning, um, I would share my contact details with you. So if you did have any questions or queries, um, then please do get in touch. My mobile number is up on the screen um, and also my email address. And then just before you go, I just wanted to draw your attention to other recent webinars which we have run and are currently available on our website. And also at the bottom, um, just draw your attention to our upcoming webinars um, that are happening throughout this month. So if you haven't already registered and are interested in, in attending any, then let me know and I can send you um, the relevant links to register. And then just one last slide uh, before you go. At the end of today's session, a very quick survey will appear on your screen. Um, I would be very grateful if you could take the time to complete uh, just for our feedback and just so we can make continual improvements to how we deliver our webinars. Um, I do appreciate your time and support in completing this. Um, and that, it, that is it for today. Thank you again for listening and we look forward to seeing you again on future webinars.